The second question pertains to the Distressed Cities Act. Scranton has been designated a distressed city since 1992, and we seem to be facing exactly the same challenges now as we did 18 years ago. What's wrong with Act 47, the Distressed Cities Act, if anything, and should there be a defined time frame for this designation? The question goes to you, Lee. Well, I think uh, Act 47 has been a complete failure in the Commonwealth, as everybody who lives in Scranton knows. Um, I think there's no teeth to it. I think the PEL should have uh, a plan that they can present that's going to bring real change. Um, I think, uh, to be honest with you, we're overtaxed in the Commonwealth. And I, my belief is that the PEL is only used as an instrument to force the tax base to keep making payments beyond their ability to do so. I, I just think that um, most of the plans that PEL has are unrealistic. They're talking about cutting services, whether it's fire, DPW, or police, which residents pay for. I think that what we've had for a long time is a failed political system where we elect people that aren't accountable for their actions and they take communities into a situation where uh, there's no avenue to make change because they just keep following a failed agenda over and over again. The city of Scranton is, is one, uh, one example of that. I mean, there was a recovery plan. None of it was followed. There's been no remedial action taken by uh, the administration. And the PEL has done absolutely nothing. The recovery plan was a sham. I read it from one side to the other. And I, I really think that we need government that represents people instead of special interest. And I think that what's happened in the district is we've worried more about special interest than we've worried about people. And that's been our problem. Ken. Well, very simply, I think I, I agree. Act 47 has been a failure. I think that the mayor's or the strong councils uh, throughout the Commonwealth have used this act as a crutch uh, when it came when it comes to negotiating contracts uh, with the uh, uh, public servants, uh, uh, whether it be DPW or police or firemen. And I don't believe that's listen. That's not why Act 47 was was invented um, or was legislated. It it, it was there to uh, help cities. Uh, overcome their difficult times and we've seen it from east coast to the west coast uh, from the smallest township to the biggest cities they're all pushed to the limits and I, I believe that uh, uh, we need uh, that act 47 should uh, should act as a um, catalyst and not a not a crutch um, and I also believe that there should be a window um, two to four two to four years four years being the the, the maximum um, uh, before we would close the uh, distressed city status. Lee, anything to add? I'd just like to ask um, Representative Smith if he's introduced a bill like that in the House of Representatives. And Not what I'll say is, excuse me, I'll ask the questions for now and you'll get an opportunity later, okay? Well, that was my rebuttal. <clears throat> we're, lo we're looking for you to answer the questions that we're putting forth to you at this point in time. We're going to move along to fiscal policy, and the first response will go to you, Ken. And the question is, what are your budget priorities? And I want you to be specific with any cuts or increases you propose, but I want you to avoid that term, that generic wasteful spending terminology. Not that I don't want you to talk about cuts, but I don't want you to say I want to cut wasteful spending. If you want to cut wasteful spending, what do you mean by that? So what are your budget priorities, and what cuts or increases would you propose? Well, I think when we look at, at the budget and, and the trials of the budget, let's look internally first um, uh, within, the, within the state government itself. Um, for example, the state um, vehicles and, and, and that fleet of vehicles, what does that cost? What, is, what does that cost the Commonwealth? Um, as far as, as going to, uh, um, to the outside and, and, and and budget cuts, um, we have to do that in a responsible, responsible way so we don't affect those most vulnerable among us. And, and at the same time, we have to be stewards that we, um, we don't abandon uh, programs such as uh, things that are important like education. Um, education, if we don't invest in our children today, we'll invest in them um, maybe in the state penitentiaries in the long run. And, and talk about saving dollars. Listen, the fastest growing percentage of the state budget, corrections. Corrections. 
there's something wrong somewhere. In our state penitentiaries, tens of millions of dollars are going in every single year. And I truly believe that if we invest in the early years of education, pre-K counts, um, um, full day kindergarten, um, Head Start programs, getting into elementary and, and, and middle school and, and high school, this is where we invest. This is where we save our dollars so that they go out, these, these, these uh, students are prepared. They, and, and instead of costing us money in the, in the state penitentiaries, they have jobs. They create jobs and it's economic growth. Thank you. Lee, the same question to you. Okay, well, my fiscal priorities are really simple. I think for a long time we've talked about things that really, you know, I don't, look, at vehicles may be important, but the truth of the matter is that's the same old tire rhetoric we've heard for a long time. We have to take the budget, take it apart, line item by line item, find out where that money went, okay? I just think too often we're trying to put bandages on hemorrhages. I mean, we're talking about education in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Everybody knows that education in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has failed. I mean, we have some real problems, and we keep looking to the same things. And the truth of the matter is this. We need a legislature that's going to work. They spend too much time driving back and forth for per diems and hanging out in Harrisburg, and the work just isn't getting done. It hasn't getting done this time and, and many previous ones. And we always hear about you know, what they're going to do. But the truth of the matter is they spend to so much time playing politics in Harrisburg. And the truth of the matter is, until you know where that money in the budget goes to, you can't correct it. And all we ever hear about is one more revenue enhancement after another and after another. And the truth of the matter is this. The residents in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have no more money to give. Okay, we've got to do something about corporate taxes. And the first thing we have to do is we have to take that budget apart, line item by line item. We elect representatives to represent us, and they have to start doing that. And these tired excuses we get, they're not acceptable.